What's going on everybody, Jay Hayes here. So today I'm gonna to be doing a review on a device that I picked up for the purposes of the review. If you guys have not seen the original video that I did on the original Farrow by Rip Trippers and Digit Flavor, I'll go ahead and post the link right there. Now when I did that device, I actually liked it. It was a little awkward, the whole shape of it, kind of like a reversed hourglass, so to speak. Skinny on the bottom, fat in the middle, like a muffin top that a human would have, kind of like how it overlaps, your belly overlaps, your belt, and your waistband. Sort of like that is what the Pharaoh was. This is more of the anorexic version. It's a lot smaller, a lot skinnier. I know people may get offended by what I'm saying right now, but at this point, I don't really think it even matters. I think I've already created enough enemies that I can't do myself any more harm than I can good. Pharaoh mini. This is supposed to be a mini rendition of the original Pharaoh. There's not a lot of similarities between the two. I mean, you're going to be real hard pressed to find out what's similar to this versus the original Pharaoh. One was extremely large, top airflow, bottom airflow. This is got just bottom airflow. It still has that locking mechanism thing. There is still that extension as an option, so you can make it a little bit smaller. But looking at this side by side, it's gonna remind you a lot of the Zeus RTA, which I did a review on as well. I don't really wanna so much compare the two. They bought Rip Trippers and Digiflavor. So without further ado. Let's flip it. It's not really applicable to the original Pharaoh. I'll explain why when I break it apart and I show you all the different parts. On the side, got a little bit of a website there. There's social media. Rip Trippers Project. And then on the back, 24 millimeter in diameter. That's good. The original Pharaoh, I can't remember what it was. If it was 26 on the bottom and 20 in the center, then 30 on the top. But it was a definitive amount of different diameters for a tank. It was just very awkward. 810 to 510. Those of you that don't know what the 810 is, people call it the Goon or myself call it the Grenady Drip Tip. Interchangeable decks, 2 and 5 milliliter capacity included. What they're referring to here is the actual size of the tanks down here on the bottom you got scratch and sniff which i believe looks to be banana pamphlet of sorts a little user manual which is in fact multilingual this manual here is a good thing because on this tank there's a bunch of different little parts that are at the bottom of this that allows you to make it a smaller tank a bigger tank change the adapters there's just a lot of different peripherals that need to be addressed and the manual does just that one glass that's on the tank you have an extra glass that's the same one that's on the tank and then the small rendition if you're looking at the bottom of that it's got a lot of rainbow effects going on there my little pony triple tree there some springs some screws a bunch of little o-rings and that's kind of it so this is just basically a spare part bag you notice that a lot of tanks and drippers are not coming with coils and cotton anymore you have this horrifically safety tip gun color drip tip which is 810 typical grenadine then you have an adapter here which is for the 510 so it goes from 810 to 510 510 drip tip i actually like this drip tip and then a little adapter to unscrew said such tank lock that's the first thing i'm gonna assume this this is extra adapter which is gonna go in the tank to extend it to where it's at as you can tell by looking at it it really has nothing on it that's from the original pharaoh i do believe the only thing that shares the similarities between this and the original pharaoh is the build deck drip tip is different airflow is different as it's not on the top and the bottom which was kind of a staple in the whole Faro design. You had an adjustable locking ring up here, adjustable on the bottom. The only thing that's similar from the original Faro is Faro is written on the chimney here. You have juice flow control. Deck's kind of similar, and the locking ring on the top is similar. So let's take this apart. First, you're going to take this lifesaver off. You can see that's got that recessed 810 style. All this piece does is essentially lock the tank together. I'm assuming that when you're unscrewing the top piece, you may unscrew unscrew this piece so this acts as like a security blanket so to speak the glass that is on here is the two mil glass which is going to be the shorter tank to make it larger you're going to need to take out this adapter and replace it with this one but you also have to replace the glass so we're going to go ahead and unscrew this that's the deck we'll go over that in a second this is where it may get a little rough for most people you're going to have to take this glass apart because you have to get the bigger glass 
in between there making this a larger tank. At two mils is really, really low amounts of juice capacity. This is gonna be a little difficult for you to separate. I'm just gonna tell you that now. They always make these really tight, which I guess is a good thing because it's secure, but at the same time, it's also a bad thing because it's very, very difficult to separate. Yep. You're gonna need to make sure you keep that o-ring. It's important. This part right here is where you're going to screw the larger adapter on the top just like that. Your big glass is gonna go in. Keep in mind, don't forget about that other o-ring that was on the bottom. This goes on here. This is gonna screw back on the top. You know what I'm noticing looking at this? Glass is actually bigger to where the chimney kind of has a bubble look to it, but it's almost yeah, it's a little bit too large for the actual tank. It'll work. It's like using the Manta bubble tank on the reload. It'll work. That's where the long lock ring comes in. This is what's going to go in and lock the tank all together. The metal adapter here, which is going to go in, I'm not going to put that in because once I put that in, I'm not going to be able to get it out. And that's going to allow you to use your 510 drip tip. Or if you were so inclined, you have your favorite drip tip you want to use, you can use that. And it actually doesn't look bad. This kind of does remind me of the tip of a plastic toy gun. It's not a horrible drip tip. Yes, it is. It's okay. That's definitely ugly. So we're just going to use the, uh, the, the lifesaver one that goes over the whole thing. I wish this would have came in black or something. Something that matched the actual tank. This Ultim doesn't match well at all. Has a lot of resemblances to the original Pharaoh. I feel that they shouldn't have named this the Pharaoh Mini because really not many things that's similar to the original Pharaoh on this. As you unscrew this, that whole clamp mechanism comes with the screw. And what keeps that clamp mechanism in place is the fact that it's channeled here on the side maintaining the integrity of the actual post as it springs up and it does come with extra springs which is a good thing so i guess if you really wanted to you could make this a dual coil jammy doing one here and one here but i feel it would really be best with a straight up single shot just like that so what we are going to be utilizing is a parallel fuse clapton 26 gauge here and then on the outside we have 38 with a dual core of 28. And as a single coil option, because this is spring loaded, we're gonna go ahead and load it with the legs facing down. Now, the reason why I like to do this is because it gives me a little bit more leverage than if they're facing up. Doesn't matter which way you do this. It just really boils down to personal preference. Oh, that's a really big coil I'm fitting in there. Very little bit of room left to go past that. That's what happens when you try to put a four millimeter inner diameter. It's not touching clearly, but it's a tight fit in there. It's kind of a good looking coil. God, tell me I can't build. Eat my asshole. That's how that's gonna go down. So make sure you close your eyes, close them up. Here we go, we're gonna go do a snip snip. Good job. Do it again one more time. Cover your eyes up. Here we go, one, two, three, and close it. Good job. There it is, guys. That's a really big coil in there. I don't know if I would recommend putting a four millimeter in their diameter because that thing is a monstrosity. 0.33. Real easy wick. Now, I know it looks like there is a lot of wick here, and there is, and that's because that's a four millimeter inner diameter. However, if you notice here, this is very, very loose and just kind of sitting in there. That's kind of how you want to do it. I know some people don't really fill up the well. They just kind of place the cotton on the top. I'm more of a well builder myself, sort of like how they have carpet carpenters and mechanics and I consider myself what is the name of a person that builds well for a living is that a well builder that can't be right masonry we have the larger tank here we're just going to go ahead and thread that on just be careful that your coil the legs like you see right here what I got going on is actually a bad thing try to do the cutting prior to having the cotton in there you don't want any of the extra wireage go in the actual cotton this is juice flow control let me explain something when you're doing a juice flow on this. Not as easy as you think it would be. As you, take it off this mod because I don't want to destroy the mod. As you tighten this, okay, it's gonna feel like you're tightening it even more. I feel like I'm gonna break this glass if I keep trying to go that tight. As you spin this, you're gonna tighten it. So once it's tightened down all the way, you really can't adjust that juice flow. Adjusting it is loosening the chamber. Unless I'm missing out on something, it does spin, but the more you spin it to the left or right, right is gonna tighten it and left is gonna do the exact opposite and make it loose. So it seems like it's gonna be a little bit difficult to adjust the juice flow more than what other tanks are. As I spin that, you see? 
So now the bottom of the tank is kind of loose and floppy. It's not an isolated juice flow. As you fill this up, if you're tightening down the top, you're gonna have to loosen it up a little bit to get it loose. Because it's something that like the Zeus RTA, as you unthread the top, unless you have the locking ring in here, we're gonna go ahead and put the locking ring in there just because I wanna see if that helps with the juice flow. Yeah, I don't see how this is gonna help. Now that that's in there, you see how it's still unscrews? And that's with the ring in there. Yeah, it's just very poorly designed, poorly executed. Just, I don't like that idea at all. Stupid. All right, guys. So here we are back on top with the Faro RTA. Notice how I left out the whole mini part. As you can see, that is the large tank on the top of there, which is definitely not a mini. That is extremely tall and reminds me of some type of dildo apparatus. That is absurd. Okay, now... Yeah, this, okay, this tank is just straight up ugly. It is gross. Let's go over a couple things. This is what irritates me. What we have here is a case of, I don't give a fucks. That's what we got going on. This is, let me release another product using the same name of my successful tank. Now keep in mind, the guy that does this, I'm not gonna rip apart. I don't have, no pun intended, I don't have anything necessarily negative to approach him with. He's a salesman, that's what he does. It is what it is. We've all been through this i don't need to go down this road but i can tell you right now that him putting his name on this oh my god is a fucking failure first off the juice flow control no matter what you do with this when you tighten down the top part of this to adjust the juice flow once you go all the way to the right you can't keep spinning it because it's not one piece to adjust the juice flow on this is very deceiving it is juice flow control but no one really utilizes juice flow control anymore and if they do this fails fucking miserably. The reason why this fails miserably is because it's one piece chimney. It's not a dual piece that actually slides and allows you to adjust the juice flow. Turn it down all the way and it doesn't line up properly so you have to loosen it which is going to loosen the pressure of the tank therefore causing juice to come out of where the o-rings are. So it even if you tighten it down all the way, unless you know some shit where you're jimmy jamming your jammies and it's it's not flopping out and being all slippery slotty, then fantastic. But I can tell you firsthand that this juice flow sucks asshole. It is just absolutely fucking horrendous. Okay, let me show you some of the vapor production. I'm scared to use this because this is not tightened down all the way. 44.5 out of 0.37 airflow is wide open. Right off the bat, the first thing you heard was a lot of juice. I clearly vaped this before bringing it back on the top, right? I, I clearly did. Okay, so the flavor is good. The flavor is on point. I'm not going to bullshit you. Now, granted, coil that I have in there is pretty friggin' massive. I don't know how I feel about this tank as a whole because the flavor is good. The capacity is good. But it's got to be one of the ugliest tanks I've ever seen. Like, this looks like some shit that belongs in, like, the Pizza Man porn. You know what the Pizza Man porn is? That's where a guy is dressed up like a pizza pie and comes over and gives you a piece of his crust. Now, that's not what that is. But either way, this is just an absolutely horrendous looking tank. Now, you can argue and say the 2 mil option is a little bit better. And I won't disagree with you. It resembles the Zeus RTA a lot on a side-by-side. -side. But what exactly of this is part of the Pharaoh? Are we using just the deck? If we're using just the deck, why did Rip Trippers put his name on something that is saying, listen, it has juice flow control, but it clearly does not have juice flow control. And if it does have juice flow control, either I'm retarded or this shit's broken. I'm gonna go with the second option just because I like to think that I don't have something mentally wrong with me. Maybe I do, I don't know. Because juice flow control is not an option. Do it where there is no juice flow control and it's wide open. We all are accustomed to doing builds based off the amount of juice that's going through through the juice ports. Like, we all know that by now. Juice flow control is great if you're going to switch out, do a little 60-40, a little 70-30, a little 80-20, maybe even a 95 VG jammy. But everybody builds their builds based off of what they're vaping on. You know, there is that select few that do switch and swap out different juices without changing the cot. You can easily fix all of those things, removing juice flow control and just learning how to wick properly. Again, guys, I'm not joking. Once 
So right now, look, let me show you what I'm talking about. I showed you down low, but let me show you. So right now I'm adjusting the juice flow, right? Because there's juice in here, I'm not going to keep going because it's just going to unscrew off. But when I go all the way tight, right, you'll see clearly that there is no juice flow at all going into the tank. I can't go to the right because I'm tightening down the mod. I can't even just grab this little ring piece where the juice flow is and turn it to the right more because it's just going to tighten down. It's one piece. It just doesn't work. Again, I may be doing it wrong, but that's, that's, um, y'all see? Look it. Look it. You see what I'm fucking talking about? Look at this. You see? This is how I start to lose my fucking shit. We have a juice problem. You know why we have a juice problem? Because this fucking tank sucks. That's why. Like, look, look it. Go ahead, use the argument. I don't know how to build our tears. Go ahead, use the argument. Use the argument. Go for it. Go, go ahead. Use it. You done? You done being a little bitch now? You done saying that I can't do builds? Because uh, everybody that knows me knows that I live by RTAs. Like, I love them. Typhoon GT3, there's just a plethora of tanks that I really enjoy using. But, um, yeah, now I'm leaking like a sieve. This is a horrible, horrible design. Did I say horrible? If I was to rate this device on a 0 to 10, I would give it a fucking 2. I... I think it's the biggest piece of shit. Would I recommend it? Absolutely not. If you want a small tank, unless you absolutely love Rip Trippers, I would get like the Zeus RTA because it's almost identical to this. It has a better locking mechanism on the top. You don't have to worry about no flip-flop jammies juice coming out because your shit's jacked up and the juice flow doesn't work. Guys, I look at all the juice. Look at all of the juice. A piece of shit. That's what this is. Congratulations, Rep Trippers. You now look like a total asshole because you've been doing reviews for how long? And you've made how many tanks? And you've reviewed how many tanks? Right. Right. I swear to God, I think a monkey and fucking Barney could make a better tank than this. And that's being nice. Maybe even Oscar the Grouch and the Cookie Monster. Or even a unicorn and a pony. Or a Pegasus. This is fucking miserable. Ninja Flavor's gonna be like, ooh, this guy's mad because he didn't get it. No, I'm not. Shut the fuck up. That's not it. I'm mad because this thing's a piece of shit. And rightfully so. It's a piece of shit. I challenge someone to argue the fact that the juice flow control works. Again, let's take it as a consumer review. Let's just say that there's an O-ring that I don't know exists, and that's not one piece. Right piece of shit. Don't go buy this. Buy anything else. Go buy some Twizzlers, because at least then you'll get some satisfaction upon eating a Twizzler and realizing the taste is real, because this tank is a lie. The cake is a lie. This is bullshit. Do not buy it. Period. That's the end of that discussion. There should be nothing else we're going to discuss. I've kept it real. Have you? Piece of shit. Jay's out.